today what we're going to talk about is collecting of evidence. Uh, the what and the where, the how and the when. And there are four different types of data you can collect for school improvement planning. That data includes student learning data, perceptual data, school process data, and demographic data. The student learning data really tells us about the results we're getting now. And that type of information tells us which students are succeeding academically and which are not. Um, but it's, it's really important when you're considering your collaborative inquiry to think about um, those other types of daily assessments that we can gather about student learning that's happening in our classroom right here and right now. So the second type of data you can use for school improvement planning is demographic data. Demographic data describe the school context. It tells us who our students, staff, and community are. Examples might include language proficiency, it might include attendance, enrollment, number of students that are currently um, in the applied versus academic stream, and that's important information that we can gather. And it's important information that might already be gathered for us. The third type is perceptual data. Perceptual data tells us about our staff and students and, and parents and their satisfaction with the work of the school. Perceptual data is usually gathered um, through surveys or through questionnaires. The fourth type of data that we consider for school improvement planning is school process data. That basically is how do we do business. It's information about current approaches to teaching and learning. It's information about uh, the programs or information about our organization. And even though it's the most readily available, it's sometimes difficult to collect because it requires us to examine our practice. It's also important though to think um, when you're trying to determine what evidence is going to help you answer your question that you consider a couple questions. Are you measuring what you think you're measuring? And if you did it again, would you yield the same results? And so that's ensuring that the evidence you gather is both valid and reliable. I do also recommend that when teams are considering evidence that they commit to a data collection plan in writing. That data collection plan is going to outline how the data is going to be collected. It's going to show what data is going to be collected and when and who so that there's some accountability on part of the team, but also providing you with a timeline so that your team can stay focused. And when you're considering your data collection plan, you might start with one or two pieces of data, but if you can get up to three, that's, that's um, ideal. Um, but you want to, uh, under all circumstances, ensure that what you're doing is manageable. And so you consider that at the same time while weighing a variety of sources, you might just decide that it's good for your team to start with one, um, examine that, and then determine do you need to collect more. And finally, when we consider collecting evidence, we're really looking at the student learning focus that was articulated in our question. We always have to go back to that question and ensure the evidence is going to be a measure of student learning. On top of that, however, our question also articulates a teacher action. So when you're thinking about that teacher action, you might consider some artifacts of what teachers are doing so that you can have those conversations about teacher practice as well.